And this is the integrated math three practice test for T and ready. Currently we're on question number 18 on this version anyway. Calvin purchased a pieces a, purchases a piece of heavy machinery for $32,300. The value of the machine depreciates. So that's important for us at an annual rate of 8.3%. Annual rate matters here. Which function represents the value of the machine with, with an approximate equivalent monthly depreciation rate? I should have included that as well. So a couple things here to look at. Number one, the fact that it depreciates means that it's going to go down in value as opposed to up. The other things that you have to look at are the fact that there is an annual rate that they're giving you that 8.3 percent is each that 8.3 percent should be spread out over the whole year but we want to do depreciation by the month which means we're going to have to take that 8.3 percent and break it into 12 parts basically uh, or apply it 12 times a year so where do we go with any of this stuff the nice thing for us is if you're not a hundred percent clued into how this is going to work, um, you can actually use the reference page, which is increased in value over the years. So before I even go to do that, I'm going to take a look at what's happening. First off, it's changing by a percentage as opposed to a specific amount. It's not saying that it's going to depreciate $1,000 a month. It says 8.3%, which means the first month, whatever 8.3% of 32,300 is. In the second month, you'll subtract whatever amount you found in the first month. That's your new value that you're going to subtract 8.3% of, not 8.3% of this number over and over and over again, which means the amount that changes each time will change. That makes essentially, that means essentially we're going to be doing an exponential change. So just be aware that it's not a constant change every time. Uh, by the way, anything that you purchase that's machinery based or a vehicle or whatever depreciates in value. Real estate doesn't work like that necessarily. If you buy a house and do nothing to it, it's possible the value will still go up based on what other properties in the area are doing with cars, computers, machinery, tractors, all that stuff. Those things are going to go down in value. Think about buying a computer brand new right now. Think how much it's going to be worth in six years. Significantly less because the usefulness of the product decreases. Same for machinery if you use it a lot. So I'm going to look for something that has exponential values in it. So I'm going to go up here to the reference page. Aha. The most reasonable, I know the value is going down because it's a depreciation. So here's an exponential decay. And also the compound interest formula has some usefulness to it there. But what I will work on for now is this. The 1 plus T here and the 1 plus R over N thing going on there. Um, the big deal with that is whether the value is increasing over time or not. I might make a note to myself that NT was something I saw here as well before I go back down. That could be helpful to me because of the whole monthly versus annual situation. Let's see if I can get that back. Okay. Now, I'm going to rewrite this formula for decay here. What's with the 1 minus R thing? Well, if I multiply the 8.3% by the principal, it will tell me, or the amount that we're working with, it will just tell me what 8.3% of that is. It doesn't actually show change at all. I want to know, okay, so now that I know what that 8.3% is, what do I get once I subtract that amount from the original amount? So I multiply my original value by one first to start with 32,300. And then I subtract it. I subtract the that amount's percentage of 8.3%. So I'll do 32,300 and whatever 8.3% of that is, subtract that out. That'll give me my new value for the second step. That would be month one. Month two, the A value would be whatever I figured out in month one, and then on and on and on. It's like a computer code. Once you post it, the original value, it'll just knock the values down appropriately for you on your way. So in this, Y is equal to A is 32,300. 1 minus, here's where it becomes a little bit more like the um, interest formula. 
unlike just having 8.3% here, which should be 0.083, instead of having this every single time, I'm actually going to have to address the fact that I'm monthly depreciating it, and I'll do that using, unlike where I'm doing the compound interest formula, I'm going to do that with an exponent here. So I'm going to raise it to the one twelfth. So it's going to apply each time because this whole engine here sort of represents, well, what happens when I have a single turn and then repeat it over and over again. So I need to figure out this whole thing point. Couldn't figure out how I wanted to write that down. I'm slowly losing it. This is for my monthly piece. The other part is I need to apply it um, the number of years. That's what T represents. But I also, again, I'm running this thing each month, so I can't do it just that number of years. I have to do it 12 times. So the adjustments are I need to adjust the rate, so I'm spreading this 8.3% out of the whole year because it's an annual rate. But I also need to run the formula many more times. If I'm going to do it for 12 years, I can't run it 12 times. That would only get me to the end of the first year. I want to run it 144 times, so I need to make that adjustment. All I need to do now is the 1 minus 0.83 business. And since they've only given you two, guess what? It's the smaller one. So y is equal to 32,300, and the part that's actually in the parentheses will be this. And if you wanted to go ahead and do that, more power to you. I don't know why I made that as a 9. I lost my mind. Um, zero. So 0.917. And again, because I'm doing it monthly, I need to do that, and then I need to adjust with this on the outside. So here you have it. A couple things that you could have looked for that would have helped you very early on. Since it's a depreciation rate, there's no way it's going to be 1.083. So that was never going to happen. And since you're doing it multiple times in a year, this is very helpful to you. So those things could have made a big difference. You could have eliminated some things pretty early on and not have to deal with any of that. So that's it.